And when the Lord saved us, he served, saved us to enlarge his kingdom, to do the work of the Lord, and also to bear fruits. But even though in the midst of all the great things, the newness of life, we find ourselves engaged in a battle between God's truth and Satan lies. And we understand as Paul used some very good adjectives to describe that we're in a fierce inner battle between the flesh and the spirit. And I love the way he named the old man and the new man. I like that title, the old man. To me, that represents that the old man is weak and feeble and easily attainable if we do it through the spirit. And we're in a conflict in our flesh and also a conflict with the spirit, the flesh and the spirit conflicts one another. And if we do not learn it at an early stage in our walk with God, we would never overcome the strong inner urge to gratify our flesh. Because one thing about our flesh, you can never appease it. I don't care how much you give in and how much you give in and how much you sin and you hurt God and you hurt yourselves and you hurt others, the flesh would never be satisfied. The flesh wants to enslave us and put us back in bondage that God has set us free from. And Paul describes this war so vividly, you can kind of see opponents as he talk in Romans, the seventh chapter. And he's describing a battle that's a losing battle to those that have learned how to walk after the spirit and not after the flesh. But it's a losing battle if you think that you can walk after your flesh and win this war, it's not going to happen. And Paul even describes himself, and I love his transparency and honesty and humility. He said, I am flesh, sold into bondage of sin. I like the way Paul, he never tried to put himself on a pedestal and make the readers believe that he was something that he wasn't. He understood that even though I'm practicing and I'm trying to live free without sin, I carry evil around with me every day. He said the very thing that I hate, I find myself doing it. This is a man that wrote many of the books of the Bible. He wrote the Pauline epistles. And many of us love the writings of Paul, especially the preachers. We can preach from the Pauline epistle because he was charismatic and he, he just, you know, excites you and get you on fire with his terminology and words that he used. But this man, he understood that I'm a prisoner to the law of sin. I don't care how saved I want to be in my mind, I have to remind myself that no good thing dwells in my flesh. And if we don't get that, saints, we'll be on a merry-go-round of sin until the Lord comes back. We have to understand that there's a fine line between being saved and being a sinner. Sinners, they practice sin. But saints of God, if we slip up and we fall into sin, we don't practice it, but we fall on our knees and we ask God to forgive me. I want to be in the race and I want to do your will. God, help me to be better. And the Lord will give us instructions. And some of those instructions is get in your word. Get on your knees. Come to church. Learn how to deny yourself from food and I give you the power to live victoriously over the gratifications and the things that your flesh want to do. We are saved to bring forth fruits unto God. And when God looks at us, is he's looking for a production. 
He's looking for you bearing fruits. He's looking for you multiplying. And you're working in the ministry and the calling that God has called you to do and to be. Yes. And when we're not fruitful, God begins to look at us and he began to analyze what use are you to the kingdom. Yes. Am I going to keep dealing with sin after sin after sin? Are you finally going to come to the knowledge of truth that you got to do something to keep yourself in the will of God? Yes. See, if you just pick up your Bible on Friday nights and Wednesdays and Sundays, you may find yourself tripping up into sin. But as saints of God, the Bible said that we have to work out our own soul salvation. Yes. Don't nobody know you like you. Yes. And maybe you need more fasting than January time. Yes. But when your flesh begins to act up, you've got to do something to get it under control so I can stay in the will of God, so that I can walk victoriously before the Lord, so the Lord can use me anytime, any place, anywhere, anyhow you want to use me. God is calling for us to come out of sin. Pause that some of us learn by the school of heart knots. We have to get out there and get knocked upside the head a few times before we realize that I need to pray for myself. I can't depend on the altar workers. I can't depend on pastor when he gets up and when he's done preaching to lay hands on me. Some people just want other folks to carry you, but God is looking for some grown-up saints. He's looking for somebody that can live free without sin. Sin separate us from God. The Bible said that it stinks in the nostrils of God. He said, I'd rather for you to be cold or hot, but lukewarm makes me sick. It makes me throw up. If you can visualize God actually get sick at the stomach because of sin. We have opponents in this battle. And I pictured it as a boxing match. And I said, in the left corner, the reigning champion, the old man. Okay. Paul said, your former conversation is in the left corner. You know, some of us had a potty mouth. Some of us would gossip and talk about folks and slander their names and, you know, just run off at the mouth. Is in the left corner. And he said, the corrupt old man is in the left corner. And this man is waging war in our members on a daily basis, trying to imprison and enslave us again to the flesh. I'm so glad that the Lord saved me. I got a made up mind and a strong determination that I'm not going back. And you can say, well, how can you say that with confidence? Because I'm all in. And when you all and you ready for the fight. And in the right corner, we have the new challenger, and I'm talking about when you first get saved. The new challenger is the inner man. You know how those boxes jumping around? And you know they pointing at the belt? Because the new man want to subdue the old man. The inner man is excited and joyful, and if you can remember the day that you got saved, you got new love and new life, and you were excited about coming to church. You were excited about getting in the Word and coming to Sunday school and Bible school and couldn't wait to January to renew your relationship with the Lord. I'm talking about the new challenger on tonight. Paul said in Ephesians 4 and 24, put on the new man which after God has created in righteousness and pure holiness. I don't know about you, but I'm in the right-hand corner, and I'm excited about the Lord. And every day I get up and I put on my championship belt. And you know when you're a champion, you got to defend that belt. You have all kinds of contenders calling your 
your name. Uh, and they want to knock you out in the first round. Uh, but every day I get up and I put on my boxing gloves. Uh, and you know, sometimes you got to loosen up and you got to do your stretches. Uh, and you got to get ready for the battle that's going on. Uh, I don't know about you, but I got one of those medicine balls, mother. Y'all might know about that. Uh, and when you get on your medicine ball, it stretches all those ligaments and tendons, and you feel loose. Uh, Y'all know how I feel when you feel loose. Anybody ever felt loose in your muscles? And you get out there, you're running, or you're jogging, or you're on your bike, and man, I feel good today. I think I'm going to go all the way. That's how it has to be in salvation. You got to get up, put on your boxing glove. And you got to tell the devil the fight is on. I'm going to stay in the right hand corner. Oh man, I don't care what you bring my way. If you come my way with some nonsense, I'm going to double up on you and reach back and give you up in the Lord. You have anybody that know how to knock out that old man? We have it in TK. And those things that's holding you back in every weight that will entangle you and keep you from being loose and light and on your feet. You got to be sober minded in this fight. Do I have any boxers in the house tonight? See the old man. He's staying right there watching every move that you make. And when he see you fasting more, Praying more, he'll send that old slick head Johnny your way. Somebody that you thought that you had forgotten about. And some of you get on social media and you get connected with somebody in your past. And see, then the devil begin to stir up that old nature in you. And then uh, the new man in the right corner begin to look at you saying, What's going on? You know, we don't go down like that. You better get on a 24-hour fast and get yourself together here. It's a battle that's going on, saints of God. Paul said we cannot be ignorant of our human nature. Some of us put too much confidence in the flesh. Your flesh is your enemy. Your flesh is an enemy against God. Your carnal nature hates God and the things of the Lord. And if you don't believe it, you keep feeding the flesh. And let your spirit man get weak. You'll be the very one that will start missing church. You'll be the one that won't show up for none of the services. Watching your watch, doing the preaching of the word. But you ain't going home to nothing. Just to sit up and look at the walls. But I'm talking about when you really saved in the Lord. Honey, you got time for God. You love the good word of the Lord. You love to praise and magnify. You'll be like Sister Smith praising him through the pain. Hallelujah. I'm talking about when you love God. When you love God, you do what it takes to please him. And if you're going to make it in this fight, you got to learn how to fight. I say you got to learn how to fight. And sometimes you got to learn how to fight and it ain't going to be fair. You got to learn how to throw down with your old man. To stay free from sin. See, self-love, when we start loving this flesh and babying this flesh, and we don't want no correction in this flesh, we don't know about to tell us what to do in this flesh. I'm grown. What a past in my business. I got a husband. I got a wife. I, I make my own money. They don't tell me what to do with my money. I'm grown. When you begin to baby this flesh and try to appeal to it, you're going to find yourself blind. And you're going to fall to all kinds of fleshly lust. Paul 
talks about the things and the sins of the flesh. We can be in our flesh right in the house of God. It can happen so fast to the best of us. We can have anger and jealousy and just be mad at folks for no reason. We got to learn, Paul said, crucify, kill that old man. I'm not trying to keep him alive. If I can kill him one day and be done with it, life will be better in this walk with God. But that's not the way that it's going to go down. This fight is every day. You sleep with the enemy. You get up with the enemy. You walk around with the enemy. And when you recognize that, you stay on your P's and Q's in the Lord. Paul describes so well an uh, imperfect state that we're in. It's a dual nature that's going on. And if you're not all in, you're going to be all out. It's just that simple. They used to say when I first got saved 30-something years ago, baby, you can't straddle the fence. That's what the old saints used to say. You can't straddle the fence. You can't serve two masters. Either you're going to serve God and hate the devil, or you're going to serve the devil and hate God. And you said, well, I'm not going to make a decision. You just made one. If you try to stay neutral, you made a decision that I'm not going to follow God. I'm going to do what my flesh wants. And in chapter 7, when I begin to read through that whole chapter, just really meditate on it, it seemed like sin was winning. But I'm so glad the Bible doesn't stop at one chapter when I flip to the next chapter. The Holy Ghost begins to take over. Paul said, oh, wretched man that I am. Who can deliver me from this body of death? The answer is God came. The Holy Ghost came. When you got Holy Ghost power, honey, you can walk right. You can love right. You can give right. You can forgive right. When you got the Holy Ghost, you got something. The Holy Ghost is just not to make you jump and shout and feel good, but the Holy Ghost, honey, when you want to go down, when the fight is on, you can reach down in the Holy Ghost and get what you need. The more that you study and read and put in the Holy Spirit, the more it's going to bring out. You said, well, I can't even uh, uh, bring up in the scriptures. Have you put it in? If you put it in, the Holy Ghost will bring it up. And you know, in my 50s now, sometimes I struggle with, okay, where is that scripture? But the Holy Ghost, it'll be quoting it. It might take me a minute to figure out what book that's in. But the Holy Ghost is going to bring it back to my remembrance. When you get in a situation, the Holy Ghost begins to stand up in you when you're feeding it. Then, uh uh, you're better than that. When sin begins to present itself to you, you're better than that. You're bigger than that. You're more important than that. You should be offended right now that that individual even said that to you. Amen. That they even suggested that to you. Yes. You should get angry in your spirit and at your flesh for even thinking about it. Whatever that it is. I love my God too much. He's done too much for me. How can I let him down? How can I hurt God this way? He's brought me too far. He's done too much for me to go back on the Lord. Are you kidding me? Why do I want to go back? I've been in the world before. I've been in darkness before. I've been in oppression before. I've been in disparity before. But look what the Lord has brought me from. He's brought me from a mighty long way. He reached down in the miry clay. When I was dead in my sin. Jesus. 
on me. He reached down in the nick of time and snatched me out of the hand of the enemy. How can I hurt a God like that? And give in to my flesh. How can I just lay it all down? My anointing caused me too much. Honey, when you think about what you had to go through to get to where you are today, that should be a motivating factor. That if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, where Maybe you've been walking up and down Lake Street talking to yourself. Maybe you have be in some alley shooting up with a filthy needle sticking out your arm. But Jesus, I said, but Jesus, how can you go back to the old man? How? How can you go back to that field? And then go back and lap up all that filth of regurgitation. That's what it's like to go back into sin. Sin ain't playing with us, saints. It has taken some good men out. It has taken some good women out. But you got to make up in your mind that I'm going to stand. I don't care if I got to go kicking and screaming. Somebody got to pull me by my, my bootstraps. I'm going to stand for the Lord. Through the Holy Spirit, we can do anything. When you got the Holy Ghost, the Bible said that you are more than a conqueror. See, a conqueror is great and has won some battles, got some defeats under their belt. But the Bible says you're more than that. You're more than a champion. You're more than that. When you have God, we don't have any excuse for sinning. To win this war, we need to realize that in us is depravity, is filled. No good thing dwells in this flesh. And when we keep that in the front of our mind, I'm not going to say put it in the back of your mind. You need to keep that in the front of your mind. Amen. That I will be messed up if I didn't pray. Yeah, you would not like me if I didn't fast. I would be unbearable if I stopped coming to church. You wouldn't want to be in my company if I didn't know Jesus. But will you keep that in the front of your mind that no good thing dwell in this flesh. And you want to keep that inner man, that old man under subjection. And you said, what is subjection? You want to keep it weak. You want to starve it out. Starve it out by walking after the spirit and doing the things of God. The enemy wants you to make excuses like, well, I can't help myself. Yes, you can. If you got the Holy Ghost, honey, you can help yourself. If you got the power of God, he said, greater is 
says he that's in you than he that's in the world. The world is not more powerful than the saints of God. There's nothing that the devil can do to overtake you. You have to give in. You have to give up. But you got to keep your flesh weakened, powerless, incapable. If you know what your weakness is, you ask God to put you on a fast. Put me in a certain book in the Bible that's going to help me to get the victory. I want to enslave the flesh. You want to enslave me? No, I'm going to enslave you. And that's the way you got to talk to your old man. You got it out for me? Oh, I got a hit on you. I'm all in. You ain't got to ever worry about me taking off my boxing glove. I sleep in these things. What? You got to have that spiritual reflex. I'm about to check you. You got to be saying that same tenacity in God. Don't get in God and become a wimp. A coward to your old man. But you got to stand up to it every day. And take away the hope. And we do all this by praying. Not just when you come to church on Wednesday, Friday, Sunday. But find your time to pray. Maybe you can't pray like the pastor. Maybe you can't pray like the apostle Paul. But you pray like you pray. Amen. You spend some time talking to the Lord. And I'm going to tell you, when you begin to pray, you'll feel empowered. God, when they say he's just a prayer way, how many know that's so true? You can be going through something, and that old man tell you that God he ain't hearing you God don't want to hear what you got to say you've been terrible this week and that's what the old man do but just knock him in the face and begin to pray and I'm telling you you only have to get five minutes into it and God just come in and hold her over you and hold you and love upon you and you've been saying man I've been missing all this this is all I got to do. Amen. It's just get in here and just begin to talk to God. Amen. So pray. Fasting. Ask God for a fasting spirit. Yes. We got some saints that know how to fast. They all in when it comes to fasting. And if you weak in that area, get with them. Girl, how you do that, man, brother? You know how you fast that long. Iron sharpens iron. And you get with those folks, and before you know it, you have your own fasting schedule. And don't be ashamed if you need help. Because you're going to need some help in this army and in this fight. We can't do it by ourselves, saints. That's a trick of the enemy. Trying to make you an island to yourself. Some people going through things secretly and silently, and you're losing the battle because you're not asking for help. You need somebody to pray with you. You need somebody to encourage you. And don't go get with somebody that got the same weakness as you got. Because they can't help you. You get with somebody you know that's strong in that area. Two weak folks all not to hang together. And I'm not being mean. But even in the body of Christ. There's people that you don't need to hang around. You love your sisters and brothers, and you respect everyone, and you speak to everyone, you treat everybody with love. But there are some people, even in the body of Christ, that you don't need to be around. If they're not bringing out the best of you, goodbye. Lord, lead me to somebody that's going to push me, that's going to challenge me, that's going to call me out when I'm wrong. You need those type folks in your corner 
when you're trying to go somewhere in the Lord. You don't need a yes man. Somebody just make you feel good. But when you're wrong, you're wrong, and they're going to tell you you're wrong. Paul said he was a wretched man. And if we went around the church calling each other wretched, y'all know y'all get upset. Who they think they are? They don't know who I am. I'm doctor. I'm not wretched. I've been saved as long as they've been alive. But Paul, Paul called himself wretched. When you look up the word wretched, it means miserable, distressed, and downcast, woeful, worthless, shameful. The Bible said the way up is down. And when you can come to the Lord and, and just call yourself and be transparent, God will raise you up. And he'll bless you in those areas. Because we can't fool God none of the time. If you haven't been what you're supposed to be, when you get in that prayer closet, God, I have been terrible this week. I've been too busy because I have not stopped the day to consider you, to pray, to read, to fast. God, forgive me. Help me to be better next week. You know, don't come and act like you're a theologian. And Gabriel, the high angel, oh thou God. And God looking at you like, who are you? I haven't heard from you in a while. You know, humble yourself. When you humble yourself, God will bring you up. Because he said he looks at the heart of man. When you're wrong, you're wrong. And go to God with honesty. I've been wrong. And in the 30 years, I have to tell God I've been wrong. Because sometimes I get busy and I don't do the things that God called me to do. I go before the Lord and I repent. I'm sorry, God. If a day go by and I've been busy and hadn't stopped to read a scripture, God, I'm so sorry. Forgive me. I know better than that. I could have stopped five minutes just to get in your word. You are important. And I need you. And I want to respect you every day. And God respects that. I'm not trying to pretend and be something that I'm not. And that's what I love about Paul, and I can associate with someone like that. And Paul felt that he was unable to fulfill the law. And he said, sometimes I feel like a criminal that's been condemned. I feel bad. Because God has done so much for me. And every time I make up in my mind, I want to do right. Evil is present with me. And he said, I got to bring this body under subjection. I got to crucify my flesh. Those are some strong words. I got to kill that old man. So the greater me can come forward. There's a greater you in you. There's a greater version of you that's dying to come out. There's a greater anointing that's in you that's, that's trying to break out and break free. But you gotta come up higher. You gotta come up higher. When this year came in, I heard the Lord telling me, come higher. That's all I heard, come higher. Come higher. So that means I can't do what I did last year. And last year could have been a good year, but God said, you gotta come higher. You got to bring it this year. Because what I'm trying to do in you, you got to raise the bar. Don't get complacent and okay, I'm doing good. I had sin and 10 years and, and I come to church faithful and I pay my tithe. But still the Lord has said, come on. Yes. He's the judge. Yes. He knows what's in us. Yes. He knows what we're capable of. Even when our weary eyes can't see what God is doing, he already knows the plan, the blueprint for our lives. And sometimes he wants us to challenge ourselves to come higher. The old man operated several ways, and I'm going to mention four. 
the law of sin versus God's law. The law of sin tries to dictate how we should live. And we're familiar with that every day. The devil always trying to tell you how you should live. Well, you should do this and you should do this and it's going to make you happy. And if you do this, this you're going to be happier. And if you hang out with that person, you know, you'll have all the joy and satisfaction that you're desiring. If you just stop going to church so much, you have some time for yourself. You have time to redecorate your house. You have time to exercise and lose that weight that you're declaring and decreeing every Sunday. If you commit this sin, you're going to feel more fulfilled. You've been thinking about it. You've been pondering on it. I'm telling you, if you just go on and do it, God understands. And if it's dealing with the opposite sex, he always likes it. God is love. And how can love be wrong? How can love in that woman be wrong? God said he loved. And then the devil will take you over to 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter. See, love is patient. Love is kind. That brother was kind to you at the moment. You know that had to be God. You've been praying for your mate. The devil will try to use the word on you. And try to make you feel like if you do this, everything is going to be all right. And then you say, everybody's doing it. What's the big deal? Why pastor keep getting up there condemning everybody doing it? You got bishops doing it. You got evangelists doing it. You got doctors doing it. Why can't I do it? He's just trying to stop my happiness. The law of sin, it always threatens and entices us. You're going to miss out on all the fun, young folks. Don't listen to Evangelist Amanda. She wants y'all to come out on youth night. They got some stuff going on at Skateville. They just want to be old fogey all the time. I'm young. I got energy. I need to get out there. My clock is ticking. Y'all done heard it all. You missing out on all the fun. But sin will ruin you. And eventually cause your spiritual death. Sin is not just trying to win one battle. But it's relentless. After win this battle, it's not going to let up and let you get a breath. And, and let you relax and let you pray and fast. It's going to be back to back to back to back. The Bible says we fall into divers' temptations. And one thing about the enemy, when he gets you to sin one time, well, you might as well go on and stay a little longer. You done did it now. You got to repent and make it worthwhile. You got to go in there and talk to pastors, so you might as well just go on and on out there. Shake it a little bit, drink something. I'm going to be embarrassed anyway. The devil wants you to wallow in that sin. But if you happen to fall, now some folks just plan the sin. You done put it on your schedule. You done got your phone out and put a date in there. He that know what to do it. Right and don't do it, the Bible says sin. And something is seriously wrong when you are planning to sin. You got to ask God to help me. I don't want to be like this. Give me a mind to get it right. Give me a mind to get myself under control. It's just the flesh is out of control. And it will get out of control the more that you feed it. When you feed the flesh, it becomes strong and it begins to boss you around. 
And the flip side, when you feed the spirit, it becomes strong and begin to lead you and guide you. Yes. Number two, the old man operates by waging a cunning and relentless war. 23 verse said, but I see a different law in my members of my body waging war. And I picture this like guerrilla warfare. How the devil, he'll have snipers. Y'all watch those war movies? You know, they get the snipers and put them up on the rooftop to catch people off guard and to get you a long way off. You know, they have those high powerful rifles and they don't have to be up close and personal. You don't even see it coming. Landmines. You out just minding your own business and step on one. Hidden roadside bombs. And then you got civilians posing as friends when they're really the enemy. You got to watch who you hanging around. Watch who's in your inner circle. You know, we go out on our jobs and school and college and workplace and shopping place. You can't let everybody in your inner circle. This space is anointed. This is my space. And you have to guard that. Guard your heart, guard your mind. You can't sit up and watch everything if you got certain weaknesses. And your weakness might not be my weakness. I may can watch UFC fighting, but that may be a weakness of some of yours. Don't try to condemn me. Because I can watch and I'm just watching and that's it. You might watch it and see something totally different. So you don't need to watch it. I can watch the ID channel and I'm gonna go to bed and sleep good. But maybe you can't watch it. See what I'm saying? What's good for you may not be good for me and vice versa. That's why we gotta know ourselves. What makes us tick? What's the triggers? that gets you in that mindset that I want to see in. And then the enemy will lure you into a trap. You know, just come hang out with us. We're just going to the mall. Girl, all the girls, you know, just come on. It's going to be nice. We're going to get our nails done and get a spa treatment. And you know, you get with them. I'm telling my folks not in the church, co-workers. You get to the mall and the restaurant there, everybody ordered the tequilas and margaritas and there you sit up there like, I thought we was going to get our nails done. You know, and that's what the enemy will lure you out there and then ambush you. But then you have a responsibility to God to get up and to walk away. Don't just sit there because your good can be evil spoken of. We have to be so careful of who we around and what they're doing because that reflects you. Guilty by association. Pick your friends very carefully. Pick people that you hang around with very carefully. And you said, well, I can hang around liars because I don't lie. But if you keep hanging with them and you keep hearing lies, before you know it, the lies have rubbed off on you. Just tell a lie. Well, you can be around people just talk about sickness all the time. And you leave the crowd like, ooh, I feel something. What's that? My back won't even hurt. You know, you just have to be careful. And then the third word, the old man operate through our bodies. Paul states, in my members of my body, the body of this death, which refers to the physical body, is under the curse of death. This body is not going anywhere. This body is not going to heaven. We're going to shed this mortality. The Bible says we're going to be changed in the twinkling of an eye from mortality to immortality. This house is going to be dissolved. God is going to give us a house not made with hands. We're going to have new bodies. 
when we go to heaven. We're not going to have the sinful body, but we're going to have glorified bodies. And we're going to be like the Lord. We're not going to walk around heaven like spirits and invisible, but we're going to have bodies like these, but they're going to be glorified. We're going to be able to eat, talk, walk, sleep, whatever that we're going to do in heaven. Because God didn't prepare all of that for us to just be floating around like a molecule. If he's building me a mansion, oh, I'm, I can decorate it. I can live in it. I can sleep in my kingly bed. I can go open up whatever it is. It might not be called a refrigerator. I just speak a state into atmosphere, and there is going to be. Who don't want to make it to that city called heaven? I'm looking forward to my glorified body. That I don't have to worry about hair shedding and, and, and sagging skin and memory fading on you. Your eyes growing dim. Creaks and things in your body. But we're going to have a glorified body. And then the last, the old man operates through strong compulsions and feelings. And we know these are faulty feelings and reasons that our flesh give us. For an example, Satan told Eve that God is not going to surely kill you. You're not going to surely die. Just eating a piece of fruit. You know God loves you more than that. That little bitty thing. Oh, God ain't going to surely kill you. Temptation always appeals to our feelings. It's not temptation if it's something that you don't desire. The devil can't tempt me with a can of beer. I've never liked beer. He can't tempt me with a cigarette. I've never smoked, don't desire it. But you think about things that your old man that you were caught up with, those are the temptations that you're going to be tempted with. If it was women, you're going to be tempted with women. If it was men, you're going to be tempted with men. If it's stealing, you're going to be tempted to steal. Because that old man ain't going nowhere. And it has memory that is built in. And what it does, it reaches in that memory of your old nature and the way you used to be. And then it goes out and suggests and, and try to hook you up with stuff that appealed to you when you were in the world. The old man and the devil is smarter than to try to tempt you with something that don't make sense. If you didn't have women issues, then he ain't trying to tempt you with no woman. You know, some people just lie all the time. So he's going to tempt you in areas to not tell the truth. Whether it's on an application or job interview or trying to get a loan or whatever that it is. They were like, well, no, no. You know, just leave it out. Leave that one blank. Just put N-A. But you know what the answer is. If you put N-A and you know that's not the answer, you just lie. Yes, we can lie with more than our mouth. <laughs> we can lie in words and deeds. And he tried to tempt you with that former conversation. The way you used to talk and the people you used to be around and how you used to associate with people. And when you see this, you got to be like Joseph, just take off the run. Feed them, them, and I, I got to get out of here. <laughs> Don't talk I'm strong. I've been saved 30 years. That ain't going to get me. I'm stronger than that. Yeah, I can talk to them. Yeah, I got five minutes. Yeah, come on, let's talk. Yeah. You know, you're talking to the person, they, they looking like the way you want them to look, yeah. smelling like the way you want them to smell. The Under the devil, take you so far and keep you too long. Right. Don't put confidence in your flesh. Yeah. Am I preaching plain tonight? Because yeah. I'm trying to help somebody. Temptation always appeal to something within us. So we have to stop and think. 
They taught us, you know, when you look, stop, drop, and roll. If you catch on fire, that natural thing, you got to do that in holiness too. You got to stop. Drop down on your knees. Roll before the presence of the Lord. When some begin to catch on fire, I'm talking about that flesh. You know, because if you run and they tell you you're on fire, the, the wind and the oxygen just make the, the flames bigger. It just really consumes you. Same thing. If that flesh is on fire and you trying to run, God, you trying to keep it a secret, honey, the devil will burn you up. Don't consume you. But if you stop, drop, and roll, you extinguish the flame. And God will give you strength to get back in the race. He'll do it. And the signs of the new birth, when we first get saved, and many of us can remember back, and I know that we never forget that day, that hour, that moment. But when you first get saved, God give you those new desires. Y'all remember that? Man, you just witness to any and everybody. And evangelism don't have to beg you. You know, but you have your own little evangelistic uh, agenda. You know, you get out there and knock on your neighbor's doors, you meet folks at the mall, you on the bus, you just, just cutting up with the Lord. Them new desires and that new love for Christ. Peter said it's so good in 1 Peter 2 and 2. He said that new love that we have for God is like a newborn baby desiring his mother's milk. And mothers, we know how babies are when they are hungry. You better get out the way. Because they're ready to suck some milk. They want the milk. And if you run out of that baby formula, oh my God. They gonna kick, scream. I remember when you used to run out of formula, you try to get a little sugar water. <laughs> Y'all remember trying to trick the baby? They slap that ball out your hand. That's what I'm talking about when you first get saved. Man, you want the milk of the word. You standing outside before they unlock the doors to get in. I just need to get in the house of the Lord. I've been going through some all week. I can't oh on my baby. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Man, you done iron your clothes two hours early. You walk into the house at midnight, 545, yeah. I'm ready to get to church. I'm talking about somebody that loves Jesus. Saturday night, you didn't put clothes out for Sunday morning. You got the shoes and the clothes and the accessories. And you didn't already pre-planned in your mind how you gonna do your hair. Because I can't wait to get to church. Anybody like that now? Man, 30 some years, I'm still excited on Wednesday night. I still desire the sincere milk of the word, hallelujah. I don't have to be teaching or preaching. I love the word. I love God. I know Pastor Lou Lacey used to sing that little song, he didn't like it. You don't love God. I love God. <laughs> When she ran through the house singing that song, and Pastor hated it. <laughs> but when she get in the car, and Pastor next to sing your song, baby. <laughs> we be rocking. You don't love God. I love God. What's wrong with you? <laughs> That's what I'm asking you tonight. You don't love God. I love God. What's wrong with you? If it had not been for Jesus, we can look at our lives and see the growth. Some of us came in with nappy head kids. 
broken, from broken homes, and look how the Lord has cleaned us up. Look how the Lord has filled us up. Look how the Lord has used us up. You don't love God? What's wrong with you? God is good. I said, God is good. He's an amazing God. He's a big God. I said, He's a big God. He's worthy of your life. I said, He's worthy for you to get all in and get in the fight. He's worthy for you to kill that old man so the greater you can live. God wants the greater you. He don't want the old man. He died so the old man could be crucified. If he wanted the old man, he wouldn't have came down from heaven. He wants the inner man. He wants what's inside of you. Because God knows there's a greater you in there. All we got to do is make up in our minds that I'm a liberate. Yeah, yeah. I don't care what it takes. I'm going to get on my knees. I'm going to be all that God has called me to be. This is my year. And you have to make up in your mind, this is my year. I'm not going to bench warm anymore. I'm not going to sit and look at other folks go ahead and move up and climb the ladder. And I'm still in the background. I'm going to be what God has called me to be. Yes, amen. Paul said, I want to be delivered from this flesh. I got a work to do. And I can do it greater if I didn't have to drag this old man around. But he said, I'm going to put on the new man every day. Every day I get up, I'm going to put on the new man so I can experience victory after victory after victory. If you don't put on the new man every day, you're going to walk in that old man. And you're going to get old results. But if you want victory, put on the new man. Let God lead you. Let the Spirit of the Lord lead you. Strive against the flesh. To walk in the Spirit is not hard, young people. I got saved when I was young. How many people got saved when they were young and they raised your hand and you still saved? We got some witnesses. We got a cloud of witnesses here. Yeah. That you can be saved and be young. Yeah. Right. You can be young in the church and not get into fornication. Right. You can be young in the church and hang out with your sisters and brothers and walk upright. Because yeah. your body belongs to the Lord. Yeah. And you have power. And you can live right. Amen. Young ladies, stop letting boys fool you. Jesus. Your body belongs to God. Yes. You're sanctified. Yes. Have some integrity and respect for yourself. Yes. Yes. And when you walk on respect, those guys don't know it. Right. I've been to high school, and I think all the ladies in here have been to high school too. And we know the popular girls were not the good girls. They were popular for a reason. And we got some young guys in here that's been in high school. They know how to go down. They spread rumors and they tell the other guys and you just grinning and cheesing. Thank you all popular and everybody love you. That's right. They just want a piece of you. And that have emotional scars that you got to deal with for the rest of your life. It's a blessing to be saved and to be young. Because you don't have to go through the stuff that the other young people go through. When God saved us, he gave us hope. We don't hope like the world hope. I don't care what they're going through. We can rejoice when we're saved. But God is calling us to kill the old man. So the greater man can lead him. I'm done tonight. If there's anybody that needs prayer.